this is one of those videos that you are seeing um, because I am out on vacation so just wanted to record um, quite a few videos I'm gonna be gone for again about 18 to 20 days um, and so I wanted to prepare as much content as I possibly can the goal is to have at least something out on the channel every single day and thankfully this is an idea that I've had for quite some time I've done videos like this in the past uh, but there are many characters I, since I love talking about Dokkan I would love to just upload videos that really have to do with just my thoughts about a specific character or a specific category just talking about the game in general or something about it that you could maybe throw on in the background or maybe even uh watch and give me you uh your personal opinions on uh but in this specific type of video and i'll release a few of these while i'm away but i want to discuss why certain characters in this game exist and and then just completely rework them um in order to actually fit the role that they should have had because many characters released in the game and you can see our first culprit here is isa nova uh, many characters release without any clear reason of existing especially when they have very limited categories and i feel like isa nova are literally that character so when it comes to you know these types of why does this character even exist i'm just basically going to break down the character um and then i'm going to show you my complete redesign it's not an easy a um i do that a lot but i, I, I this is not an easy this is just like saying this is how the character should have released so uh, let me know what you think thank you again for all the love and support on the channel uh feel free to subscribe if you haven't already especially if you enjoy or want to see more discussion based or you know content regarding this let's just hop into it okay um so first things first uh this character one of the reasons why i'm not a big fan of them um is not every banner unit and honestly most of these types of videos i'm going to record do feature banner units because they miss the mark on them so 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 often regardless okay um, not every banner unit has to greatly raise or stack or anything like that. Um, but I feel like the super attack has to be balanced off of the kit. Okay. Um, and this kit isn't like one of those things where like, if we're just basing it off of how this kit is built, you get 134% of stats and then you're getting 134% defense. If you get three key spheres, 134% to attack. If you get four key spheres and then guaranteed additional super with seven or more key spheres and then attacks effective against all types okay so first things first right if this is how the kit is built this character should be greatly stacking attack and defense at minimum okay because all you really have here is 134 percent of stats baseline right now of course you're going to have turns most of the time since you're changing two types of orbs into tech you're going to most of the time have more than four key spheres so you'll have extra stats here but then the, again the question becomes it's like what what's what's even the point right like this character in today's content and even in the content that was dropping around this time right because this is anniversary uh time this character is still getting the one shot like this character upon release should not have been this bad and there should have been some sort of value um to this character because all this character was really valuable for is the tech orb changing and if we take a look at uh, his categories we have gt bosses we have joined forces and we have shadow dragon saga okay now immediately out of these three categories the only two we can really focus on is is gt bosses and shadow dragon saga because joined forces itself isn't a category that you're running ice and nova on simply because they are extreme class their link set doesn't really provide value for most of the characters on this team and unless they're like a crazy joint force support there's just no reason to actually include them so of course shadow dragon saga and gt bosses make the most sense and on this team who the heck needs tech key spheres right so either you're just a, a, a this character changes orbs and then needs his their own orbs in order to function so you either build a character like that but at least give them some type of utility somewhere else or you make him a really good orb changer for characters who are actually needed on the team um and then do whatever else and again the design is just flawed i think there's there's nothing really going for this character uh, so this is the um the rework that i personally uh, thought of and again I, I really appreciate your your thought on this so first 
um i changed it to greatly raise attack and defense for three turns i think that's very fair uh for a banner unit keep in mind that this is not um dokkan fest stats we're dealing with here right so you know if i were to increase this to 334 percent it wouldn't even come close to breaking the character okay keep that in mind uh greatly raise attack and defense for three turns okay changes orbs are still the same 134 percent is still the same but now look at this reduces the damage received by 34 percent so that is some defensive utility right there right not that's not game breaking right that doesn't make the character number 10 15 20 100 in the game right but now they're more defensive oriented now automatically this character becomes a character um that you can put in slot three and maybe don't really have to worry too much because guess what in slot three with this previous build you're in slot three maybe you get all the orbs you need to so at max you're at 268 percent of defense you're performing two super attacks and you're only raising him your attack and defense like by 20 30 is it it's 30 percent right 30 percent twice right where now you're doing that same thing but now you're greatly raising attack and defense for three turns um it just makes the, it makes so much of a difference while also reducing damage right Plus an additional attack and defense was 134%. And look, it's not just defense when attacking. This is attack and defense just for collecting three key spheres. And GT bosses category allies two key and 34% of the stats with three or more key spheres obtained. I want you to be or I want you to pay very close attention to something, right? This character literally had this at the start of turn, and that is it. That's it. Everything else here in terms of stats required this character to super attack first so what i said was you know what let's make his super attack effect a lot stronger but let's just give him more stats because there are characters who perform aoe's in this game and if you are only walking into rotation with this with no damage reduction no guard even in the content that released at 2023 you're just getting one shot it is what it is but now with 34 percent damage reduction and if you collect three or more key spheres you are not only giving yourself an extra 134 percent without having to super attack which makes you more defensively tanky obviously but you're also giving gt bosses category allies two key and 34 percent to stats so now you're also receiving the benefit of that and all of your allies are as well during those aoe rotations or just to benefit the team regardless plus an additional attack and defense 134 percent again when attacking so this is when attacking this is the when attacking buff there and shadow dragon saga category allies two key and 34 percent of stats with five or more keysters obtained i increased that from four uh to five because i'm not gonna lie the increments from three four to seven just don't make sense to me i think three five and seven just ocd wise make a lot more i don't know why I, I don't know I, I, this is a me thing i guess um but look changing two orbs into tech is going to make it very easy to collect five key spheres so now when this character gets five or more key spheres you have 268 percent to attack and defense you're getting an extra 134 percent to attack and defense when performing a super attack you have an extra four key from the support you're giving to all allies and yourself and then an extra 68 percent to stats that you're giving to yourself and the entire rotation and you have 34 percent damage reduction launches additional super attack and performs a guaranteed critical hit with seven or more key spheres obtained so imagine you're collecting seven key spheres and now not only are you performing two attacks but those two attacks are and maybe even three with some hidden potential stuff but now those three uh two attacks are guaranteed crits which means that when this character who we already know is doing no damage when they're up against an enemy those crits are going to do some real damage now especially when you're greatly raising your stats so this character is a character you can put it slot three you can super attack with maybe you know if you perform two super attacks in even in today's meta i'd say if you would perform two super attacks in slot three with 34 percent damage reduction and with at least seven more keysters obtained i think i think you're going to be not like a okay but a lot you know you're not gonna be bad compared to how terrible this character was but the purpose is very very clear here this is a character who is changing orbs for a reason the reason they're changing orbs and remember when when you have an orb changer on the field it benefits the entire team but if the character itself needs it 
then how much is it really benefiting um, the character? So here, when this character is being very selfish with orbs, they're giving themselves a lot of stats. They're giving themselves the ability to do additional super attack and perform guaranteed crits and supporting the entire team. Last but not least, uh, foresees the enemy's super attacks and all allies on the team are Shadow Dragon Saga or GT Bosses category allies. This immensely, immensely increases the value of this character on those teams. Right now, when I'm building out a GT Bosses or Shadow Dragon Saga team, I, I don't care for this character. But now, if this is what the character looked like, you this is a must include, even in 2024 right world because i'm recording this stuff during the worldwide celebration this is a must run character on gt bosses and a must run character on shadow dragon saga right so if you have both of those allies on the team or the entire team comp uh, is compromised not compromised is composed of there you go of um characters who are on either of those categories the ability to have foresight is insane guaranteed crits with two attacks per crit and and raising attack greatly and defense greatly for three turns is just insane like this character again isn't the top 10 character in the game but now they're really really good and even stronger for specific categories so let me know what you think i mean i think this is a completely fair and justified rework i understand that this video is coming more than a year after this character's release but this right here this character is what should have like this is what it should have been upon release this is how good they should have been upon release upon release this is like one of again the best one of the best banner units in the game um and i don't really know how you like what banner if this is how the character released in 2023 what what banner unit would you say is better because that super saiyan 3 go tanks and boo um they're not they're not worse than this go tanks uh, sorry they're not worse than this isonova in my opinion but if this is how they released it would have been 10 times better than that super saiyan 3 go tanks and and piccolo right so I don't know man um this is what value means being able to support the entire team being able to uh, defend yourself with not only being able to mul uh, launch multiple super attacks while greatly raising your stats but also having that damage reduction also knowing where the super attacks are going to be and the price you pay for is not really a bad price because you want to have these characters on the team anyway that's the point the point is to buff these teams um because before it's like you you have to run them on these categories that you just don't have a choice i guess you can run like an extreme class team which is definitely fair um but i don't know what extreme class leader you are genuinely running so again you just default to these three teams um and, and why not give those characters a buff and why not you know uh, make the character itself stronger when now you're focused on running you know one or two of these teams out of the entire three i don't know let me know what you think um, I have more, you know, videos like this coming in the future, uh, or I don't even know which one is dropping first or which one is dropping next, but just know I have a few more of these in the chamber as well. And um, again, there's a lot of care, a lot of characters that I really do want to talk about. And I'll tell you this now. I mean, if you want me to talk about a specific character, you can let me know. Um, but um, since I'm going to be pre-recording these, I won't be able to look at that comment and say, hey, let me record that one too, right? Because this isn't coming out until I officially leave for um, the trip. So regardless, hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and good night.